Hey guys, Ernie here, Paleo Hiker MD, and today we're going to talk about a really fun topic, something that I've been asked a lot of questions about, and that's geocaching. Now, for those of you who don't know what geocaching is, you're going to learn today as we're going to kind of go over a geocaching 101. So what is it, how do you play, and why should you do it? So today, that's what we're going to talk about. So stay tuned, let's find out about geocaching. All right, so question number one, what is geocaching? What is this everybody's talking about? Well, geocaching is basically a worldwide scavenger hunt. You can play via several uh, websites. The most common one is geocaching.com. Now, you can go to uh, that website, create your own free account, and start playing right away. All you need is a way to find the geocaches. Now, what a geocache is, is just that. It's a cache, which is any kind of collection of things in some kind of a specific container. And geo means that it's found somewhere on the earth. So you get coordinates to that cache and you can go find it. Now the fun of the game is not just in finding it, but also logging your finds and trying to see how many finds you can actually make. Now we cache under the name Garcia Cachers and we have just right now, I think just over 400, maybe 403, 404 ca uh, cache finds total. So we continue to collect those. You can also purchase a premium membership which I believe is $20, um, either that or $25. I'll put it down here somewhere because I don't remember off the top of my head how much it is. That premium membership does give you access to certain premium caches. Whenever a person puts out a cache, they can mark it as premium if they want only the premium members to find it. But most of the caches are definitely free and you can find them anytime you want. So geocaching, a worldwide scavenger hunt, finding caches that could be anywhere and you can find them for fun. That's what it's all about. So a little more specifically, how do you actually play geocaching? So you go onto the website, you get the GPS coordinates, and you use pretty much one of two things to find the cache. Either a GPS device, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, a dedicated GPS device, like a Garmin or a Magellan, or you can use your smartphone. They have an Android app, they have an iPhone app. Those apps cost $10. Once you buy it, you're good to go. You don't need to purchase anything else, and you can play for as long as you want. You go to geocaching.com, or you go to your geocaching app, you put in your zip code, you put in your area, and on a map, you can find the location of all the caches around you. You pick a cache, you navigate to that cache, and that GPS coordinate is gonna get you to a general area. In geocaching, we call that area ground zero. Now, once you get to ground zero, you wanna start looking for the cache. Now, typically, the cache description on geocaching.com will give you some information about the cache. It may give you history of what it's all about, It'll give you some idea about what it might look like. In fact, some of them will say you're looking for this type of container. Now, you can also look at the past logs to see if it's been found recently. Usually, it's a good idea to make sure because if you find that it hasn't been found multiple times in a row, then it's probably gone. Or in geocaching talk, that means it's been muggled. Now, if it's been muggled, it's not there. You can report that. You can say it's not there. Or you can go ahead and just search for the next cache. If you find the cache, you open it up whether it be a small, small cache or a large cache, you open it up, you sign the log, and you put that log through geocaching.com. Basically, that's the way that you collect caches on geocaching.com. The point of the whole thing is to find as many caches as possible wherever you are around the world. Pretty simple to play. You just find the cache you want to find online, go out, try to find it, and if you do, you get to claim it by putting through your log. So, what does a geocache look like? Well, I'll tell you what, it can have a lots of different appearances. Anything can basically be used for a geocache. The key is you want it to be hidden so that people can't see it who aren't looking for the geocache. Now, there can be urban geocaches that are right in plain sight, right in the middle of the city. And there can also be a more traditional outdoors geocaches out in the woods. So I'm gonna show you guys a couple of different options for what geocaches may look like. The first is what's called a micro. Now a micro has less than 100 milliliters of volume. Very commonly, you could use one of these bison tubes, which basically is just a pill container. You can buy these for, um, you know, five for $2 on amazon.com. You unscrew it, as you can see, and inside, oh, there's a log. I already have this one pre-filled with a log. It has um, a small uh, waterproof ring there to try to keep things waterproof. You can take this, you can hang it anywhere you want to, off a tree, off a fence, 
In plain sight, very often you won't see it if the fence is black, for example, and they make these in all kinds of colors. You'll never see it sitting there unless you're looking for it. So the second type is a small. A small has between 100 milliliters and one liter in volume. Now typically you might use a, a lock and lock type of a plastic container. Those are great because they have good watertight seals. Now you can make them out of anything. Here's one I made. It's just a small container. It's made out of aluminum. And I basically just covered it in camouflage duct tape and I marked it very clearly so that people will know. With the official geocaching, this is just a, um, a paint on uh, stencil. So you can make them yourself, you can buy them pre-made, but we like to make them ourselves. So this is a general small size. Next is gonna be your regular size. Regular is one liter up to 20 liters. I have a couple of different um, common ones that are used. This is a small ammo can. And people love you using ammo cans for geocaching because they are waterproof. Uh, watertight. Ammo stays watertight in them. It has this rubber seal around it and you can very easily hide all kinds of things. Now this opens up to something else we'll talk about a little bit is what's inside these larger geocaches. Now this side also, just as an idea, this also has a sticker that is from geocaching. So you want, when you put a geocache out, you want it to be, even though it's hidden, you want it to be identified by someone playing the game as easily identified as a geocache. Now another one that I made, which I have not stenciled yet, this is a, I made myself. This is just PVC pipe. I put a PVC end on it. It's got an end and it's got a screw on top. And inside you can see we'll have tons of room for lots of swag. We'll talk about what swag is in a second. But you can see how easily you can make your own geocaches for pretty cheap. Camouflage paint, go to town, and you've got yourself a nice regular size geocache. Now the last one is a large, greater than 20 liters. That's a big geocache. That could be a, a five gallon bucket. It could be a, um, a trash can. You know, those aren't as common, obviously, but it can be that big. And you can imagine there could be tons of stuff in there. Now there is another category, which is an other. And I'll read to you guys exactly what it says. Other is see the cache description for information. It's an unusual geocache container that doesn't fit into the other categories. So that is what a geocache can look like. Basic concepts, basic sizes based on volume, but they can really be anything that the cache owner wants and can use their imagination for. All right, so what do you need to go geocaching? You're ready to go. You signed up, you got your geocaching name. What do I need to go? Well, like I said, there's two things. You either need a smartphone, Here's my iPhone, and I'll show you guys what the geocaching app looks like. This is the geocaching app. It loads up, and once you load up, it asks, find nearby geocaches, and I'll let it load up here real quick, and you can use the geocaches, and you can see very clearly that there are tons of geocaches right here next to me in Louisiana. You can use that, select the one you want, and go on your merry way. The other way to go is with a dedicated GPS. I have a Garmin, Oregon, 450T. You can download all your specific geocache information into your GPS device. Um, most GPS devices these days are made for geocaching. This one actually has its own geocaching tab on the, on the screen and it lets you go in. It'll store all the information. You can even log your geocaches with this and then sync it with the cloud once you get back home. Now once you get to the geocache you might need a certain number of tools to make sure you can log your cache. First of all I'm not going to show you all but you need a pen. Larger geocaches tend to have a pen but a lot of times they don't, and in the descriptions, it'll say, bring your own pen because there's only a log in there. Now, a couple of other things you might need are some handy tools. One is a extending magnet. This helps you get some geocachers that are in harder to get places. You're gonna be looking around a lot, so maybe a mirror like this that also extends. You can look underneath park benches, you can look places without having to bend over and go crazy, and hopefully be a little bit more discreet in your search. And a couple of other more practical things, I keep these on a very basic Kevin Harvick fan club keychain because, of course, he is the man, um, Sprint Cup champion. This is a log roller. Some of the micros are tiny, 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 tiny little containers, and the logs are tiny, tiny, tinier. You can use this 
slip the piece of paper in and you can roll the log really, really tightly and put it back in the container. And the other is to get those tiny, tiny uh, logs out, you can use a pair of simple tweezers to get those out without any problem. That really helps because a lot of these containers are tiny, the logs can be a little wet, a little crimpled, and you can pull them out easy with the tweezers and then re-roll them with the log roller. So those are some of the common tools you need. Most people will carry a geocaching bag, they'll carry extra paper, pen. A lot of times some of the caches you'll find won't have logs or logs will be full. So just as a courtesy, you'll put logs in. So those are the basic things you need to go geocaching. But mainly what you need is the will to go out there and find them. All right, so now you're ready to go, but you keep running into these things called travel bugs. So what is a travel bug? Well, a travel bug is a specific game piece that you can use in geocaching. I have an example here. This is a travel bug. Now you might say, well, that just looks like a regular old M&M character. Well, if you look on the bottom, you can see that there is a geocaching travel bug tag on it. This tag has a specific identifier number. Now, when you go in as a person who sets or releases a travel bug, you use that number and you place it out in the field in any cache you want. You can put a description about it and you can give it a goal. So let's look at this guy, Big Red. I'll show you guys on my iPad here. You can first find out where Big Red's been. So I'm gonna show you guys. You can see the Big Red has been all over. He started somewhere in Texas and we, we picked him up in Arkansas. Now Big Red's goal as stated here, is to visit candy stores everywhere, especially those with candy that looks like me. So obviously he wants to hang out with other M&Ms. So travel bugs are two things. First, as a travel bug owner, you can release a travel bug with a specific goal. For example, we had a Snoopy doll, and we decided it would be cool if that Snoopy doll could visit the large Snoopy statues that are in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where the Snoopy cartoon originated. So we sent him off, and sure enough, several months later, it went from cash to cash to cash, and we had a picture with a little girl and our Snoopy doll in front of that statue. Now, as a person who's playing the game, you can pick up travel bugs anywhere you want, as long as you can move them along on their goal. So if I had a goal, this one, for example, wanted to go to candy stores, that's easy. Now mine wanted to go to Minneapolis. So if you were picking them up and you saw the goal and you knew that the next place you were going was Maine, well, maybe that's not the best thing. But if you were going somewhere that route, maybe to New Mexico or anywhere along that line, Oklahoma, it would be more towards that way. So that's what travel bugs are. Travel bugs are game pieces that you can follow along, move along yourself or play by putting them out to reach a goal just to see, have a good time geocaching as well. All right, so you're further along your way and now you're starting to hear this word swag. There's a lot of words that you kind of have to get used to in geocaching. So what is swag? Swag is simple. Swag is anything that's inside of a geocache that you can trade with others. The general rule in geocaching is simple. If you take something out of a geocache, any kind of swag, collectible, toy, anything, you should put something back into that geocache of equal or lesser value. That way, you're not always taking things and not putting stuff back in. You can use anything for swag. The kids love to trade toys, so very often we'll use that as an opportunity for them to grab some of their smaller toys that they don't use anymore and bring them with us on geocaching trips. And they trade them out and they get new stuff. Now, me, for example, I like to use coins for swag. And you can pick these up just about anywhere. These are really simple coins. You can see this one says, good luck. And then there's some compass coins. These are very readily available. And you can basically trade out with other people anything you want to trade out. And that way it's always kind of fun. The kids love to find the larger ones because they get to trade out swag and get new toys. So if you're starting out and you have kids, they might get a little tired of just the micros that don't have any cool stuff inside for them to get. So stick to some of the bigger ones so they can trade things and I think you'll find that your kids will have a lot more fun. All right, so now you know a little bit about geocaching. So why? Why be a geocacher? Why be somebody going out there and looking for all this crazy stuff, wandering around, acting like a fool, everybody's looking at you like you're crazy because you're looking for something that nobody else can see. Well, there's a couple of reasons. We started geocaching probably about three, four years ago. We were on vacation in the Great Smoky Mountains and my wife didn't feel well. And she had recently seen on CNN or Fox News a special about geocaching. And she said, look, 
I can't get out, I don't feel well, take the kids, see if you can find one of these geocaches. And I remember our first geocache was in the back of a um, baseball field, like a little league baseball field. Way in the back, you got past the field, up into this little hill, and right underneath the tree was the geocache. And we were so excited. It was a, a plastic container, it had some trinkets, and we had a great time. And we really got hooked from there. So why geocache? Because it's fun. It's simply something that we love to do as a family. The four of us love to go. We find them, we play games, we try to get there. Once we get to ground zero, everybody's on the search to be who can find the geocache. It's made traveling so much fun. If you're a family and you don't have a lot of money to go and do things when you travel, geocaching is perfect. You can go anywhere you happen to be and make a, a game out of anywhere. Whether you be in a big city like Houston, Dallas, Washington, D.C., if you don't have the money to go and do a lot of things in the city, you can always find geocaches all over the place. And it's tons of fun. So we really utilize it almost any time we go on vacation. We reserve one day to go geocaching in the area because we have so much fun with it. And just because of that, it's something that we enjoy doing. More than anything, geocaching is about getting outside. People tend to put geocaches in locations that normally you wouldn't find. Just in my area here in central Louisiana, geocaching has taken us to areas that we never even knew existed. And I grew up here since I was a little kid. So the biggest reason is just plain adventure. Adventure and finding new places. That's why we love geocaching. So what's stopping you? What's stopping you from trying? Go to geocaching.com. Get a free account. I don't even work for them. And I'm still plugging it because I think it's so much fun. Get a free account if you're interested and you want to almost donate to the cause, get a premium membership for one year. See if you and your family use it. I guarantee you, if you enjoy it, you'll never turn back and you'll be hooked on geocaching. There's some amazing YouTube channels you can go out there and check out. I'll put links to a couple of them. The GC Doc, uh, the most, probably the most popular is a gentleman named the Geocaching Vlogger. And I definitely think you guys should check him out because his videos are amazing. And there's a lot of other really great geocaching YouTube channels. We hope to add some geocaching material in our channel, but of course we have quite a few other topics that we cover, as you all know. So we will continue to put out more geocaching information, more geocaching uh, searches, um, uh, just fun days that we have looking for geocaches. We have one right now that I'm planning and shooting on geocache maintenance, something you never think about. We are cache owners. We have about 20 caches in the area, and as a geocache owner, you have to make sure you maintain it. So over several days, my kids and I are going out and visiting all of our geocaches and making sure they're up and running and giving you guys a sneak peek of what they're all about, but at the same time, making sure that they're good for all the caches out there who wanna find. So as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. We hope you guys learned a little bit today about geocaching, what we call Geocaching 101. Certainly didn't cover everything, but I think we covered enough for you to get an idea of what it's all about and whether or not you and your family should try it. And let me tell you, the answer is yes, you and your family should try it. So get out there, do some geocaching. If you like the video, like us here on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, comment below, do all those great things, and we'll keep trying to put out good videos for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it, hope you learned, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in.